So uh, welcome everybody to an impromptu uh, UDL IRN Network and Learn series, uh, Ask Me Anything with the incomparable Kathleen McClaskey, a powerhouse in UDL and personalized learning. It is my pleasure to welcome you to our, our Network and Learn and, and I'm really super excited about our conversation. So hey Kathleen, how are you? I'm doing great. Good, good. So um, as everybody knows, um, we have a, a typical format, but I'm going to share uh, with you the format real quick right now. Um, so uh, as I said before, it's an ask me anything. So your Twitter questions are incredibly important. Um, and we are live streaming this. So you can just go ahead and jump on um, at, at our website. You can find the Zoom link and click on that and jump on or invite your friends and have a whole viewing party uh, for our Ask Me Anything tonight. Um, so typically we use our UDL IRN um, hashtag, but I also want to include uh, Kathleen's uh, own uh, hashtag, the PLearn chat, um, which we'll talk a little bit about uh, or we'll talk more about in a little bit. Uh, but also, you know, whenever you're asking questions, go ahead and tag both of those. Um, we do often do a question and response kind of section. Um, so tonight's layout is pretty simple uh, because, because I don't want to spend too much time trying to um, guide the conversation because Kathleen is a masterful storyteller and I just want to hear her stories and you will too. Uh, so tonight's plan is that we're just gonna, we're gonna frame the conversation around um, discussing how Kathleen kind of came to her, her UDL journey and what that meant for her, check for some questions, talk about uh, Kathleen's passions around UDL, which will be ex exceptionally exciting. That's why we sandwiched it in the middle, it's the meat. Uh, and then um, where her future work is going and this idea of personalized learning in UDL and what that future begins to look like. And then uh, we've got some final thoughts um, and we'll pay some bills and that'll be the evening. Uh, so without that, without any further ado, um, I'm gonna uh, stop sharing my screen and, and uh, Kathleen, we're, gonna, I'm gonna, we're just gonna jump right in. Um, okay. We have some people that are sending some questions in through chat, but uh, we'll get back to those in a bit. I, I really, Kathleen, if you can give, um, give some framing, you know, I'm changing it on the fly because um, I wanted to read your bio and then I'm like, that's, that's too stuffy for the relationship that we have. I think. <laughs> um, so so I, um, I wanna ask you just kind of, um, I just kind of want to ask you who you are, who you see yourself as, and we've, we're kind of what, you, what your work has been. And then we'll come kind of to your UDL journey, but I think it's a natural, uh, from what I, I understand and what I know about you and the conversations we've had, it's a real natural flow. So, so Kathleen, what are you up to? Where are you from? What are you doing? What's going on? Well, you know, um, where am I from? I grew up in Massachusetts. My entire education is actually in Massachusetts. Uh, I've lived here in New Hampshire for now over 40 years. Uh, I love living here. Uh, I have two uh, grown sons that are 38 and 35 and two grandsons that are 12 and six. <laughs> so, oh, wow. okay. um, so that's who I am. And, um, you know, uh, you know, I, I kind of like to be able to say to you is that um, I've always had this real vision about uh, teaching and learning and, uh, very early on, I saw how tools could be the great equalizer. In fact, in 1985, I basically uh, said that. I said, you know, computers, because technology wasn't part of the terminology, uh, were the, was the great equalizer. I always saw the reason to level the playing field for everyone um, mm -hmm. and for all children. And my kids were pretty young at the time when I this, uh, saw this, but it, was, it seemed so obvious to me that's what technology could do. Uh, yeah. Be the great equalizer. Yeah. So, so, so that's if folks out there, uh, I'm going to let you in on a little tip. Um, that may be what Kathleen says about her, but um, I, with that, I'm still going to read the bio. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, because she doesn't do herself justice, um, she's the CEO and co founder of Personalized Learning LLC. Um, that is, will be in our notes how to get to that website co-author of bestseller, Make Learning Personal in 2014 and How to Personalize Learning in 2016. Uh, her master's in technology is 1988 from Leslie College. Uh, professional career, she has been a technology integration specialist, K-12 technology director, professional developer, universal for design, design for learning consultant, and 30 years of experience in creating learner-centered environments before, before UDL was, uh, was, was really jumping off and hitting the hot spots. Um, and, and as she said, it's, it, for Kathleen, it really is about how to empower learners with tools, apps, learning skills, 
So they become independent, self-directed learners. It is the cornerstone of what she does. She's an early adopter of UDL, to, uh, starting way back in 02. Uh, she designed and instructed graduate courses on UDL at Cambridge College and Plymouth State University. Mm -hmm. 2003 to 2011, she designed and directed seven multi-year state projects using UDL as the framework in math, science, literacy, and autism. I mean, you're talking about front runner right there. Since 2012, Kathleen is a frequent presenter um, using the UDL lens to personalize learning. Um, she has presented on UDL at regional, national, international conferences, ISTE, uh, IDA conferences, UDL, IRN has had her several times. We're very happy to have her again this year in both a, a, in a pre-con um, capacity. And she's been at the, the CAS UDL symposium and everywhere she goes, Kathleen's message is an amazing one. And she always, always, uh, packs the seats in because she has some great things to say. So how about Why that? So how about that for the, for the bio? I'm your hype man tonight. I'm your hype man tonight. Um, so, so that starts to frame. And then you started to frame, um, kind of when you were telling us, <clears throat> um, uh, telling us about the beginning, um, you started to frame kind of what your UDL journey started to look like. Um, and, and I'm wondering if you can, if you can kind of continue on that. Now I gave the dates, but, but those are just dates. That's just yeah. history. The beauty so, of it is the, is the story. Yeah, so the very first time I ever heard about uh, universal design for learning was in uh, 1999 and uh, it was a workshop up in Maine. Um, and I was very intrigued by the whole concept of universal design for learning and um, really saw its value. So uh, actually, a couple of years later, I actually was involved in a three-day training at CAST uh, around UDL. Um, I understood what it meant, you know, and what it could mean for learners. So I immediately applied uh, those concepts to, well, you know, how can we really um, look at learners and understand learners uh, using UDL, and how can we better instruct all learners in the classroom? And uh, I was, uh, you know, I was a believer um, and an evangelist uh, ever since then, from about 2001 on, about UDL. So the thing is, is that uh, I probably have converted quite a few people and educators along the way <laughs> about UDL. And, um, and the thing is, is I, I got everyone to understand that uh, UDL was really for everyone. It was about just the kids that had challenges because uh, I don't know anyone that arrived on this planet in perfect learning condition. Okay? So, That's a good point. <laughs> That's a good point, right? So, uh, so the thing is, I want people to realize that, you know, we all have, you know, strengths and challenges um, in our in our learning. Yeah. And even the, the biggest and brightest children on the planet and adults have still have those challenges. So we really get to get to see, you get to see all aspects of that learner where I thought that UDL was just absolutely perfect. And um, I did several projects. And one thing that really, really got me to see um, every child as a learner was my experience with a group of autistic children where we used interactive smart boards uh, with those children. And we basically uh, defied everything they said in research about children with autism, uh, children connecting uh, making eye contact with other children in the audience. They were able to do that. They were able to tell their story with that board. But we need to see every child truly as a learner. And uh, that drives the work that I do and will drive that work that I do going forward. Um, and using the UDL lens will be the key to all of that. So, so this project um, that kind of started to reframe it, when, it, give me, in a time frame, when was that? Uh, that was, I want to say it was back, um, so this is 2017. I think it was around 2007, 2008, we mm -hmm. did this thing with Autistic Child uh, up at Spalding Youth Center in uh, here in New Hampshire. Program director called me up and said, what do you think about interactive whiteboards and autistic children? What do you think? think yeah. We could try that out. So he wanted to be able to introduce that. And then I was working with teachers on how to use that interactive whiteboard with, with, and how to design their morning lessons and morning introductions with children. And um, I will tell you that it was transformative in my thinking, but it virtually transformed children in that classroom. And uh, they developed all the classroom behaviors you would see in any, any um, school. Uh, they raised their hands, they took turns, 
They actually made eye contact with the, with kids when they were up at the board and they were sharing that thing, sharing what they were doing on the board. Um, that was pretty profound. I took video on all of this. So I have, you know, there was a lot of video that I left there at uh, Spalding Youth Center um, yeah. and actually exhibited all of that. And then I talked to its researchers about this particular project and also with smart technologies and um, talked with the CEO of smart technologies and she made um, the autistic population to focus of their marketing um, going forward using the interactive whiteboard. So, so, so Kathy, Kathy Howery is joining us in the chat and she just asked, and, and I think it's, I just want to interject this question real quick because I think it helps frame some things. Uh, was this an inclusive classroom or was this um, kind of a center-based classroom? Oh, no, this was, I mean, this is a, uh, this is a private, um, you know, uh, it's really where children are placed. It's really like the, the, the last resort for children. Mm, okay. Uh, right. Schools place children there um, and they're actually there as residents. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them and so it's they serve the children with neurobiological disorders and children with uh, um, um, a emotional handicaps uh, at that school so, so and I think that that really frames a, a great question or frames it in a way that um, adds to its uniqueness in a lot of ways right because there's a lot of um, not to take away from inclusive education by any means, um, but this this kind of closed system there there are its own challenges, especially when it's a residential system. That's that's where I started my teaching, and right. and I can I imagine that there were some even some um, uh, some very different experiences than than even I I, I myself have seen firsthand. Um, but but there's this idea of inst institutionalism and and institutionalization that happens with students. Um, uh, and it sounds like even then that this is this is breaking that mold even too in a lot of ways to me um, that well, we're not well, seeing that. Yeah. So let me just tell you. In the end, they actually uh, these kids were uh, you know did so well in in that sort of environment. They were able to attend really up to an hour and a half every morning. Okay. Wow. Every mm -hmm. morning, a group of six autistic children every right. morning. Right. And in the end, uh, they actually did a project with the kids that ha were identified with emotional handicaps. And those two teams of kids worked together on a science project. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it was, and it was, that's pretty interesting, because that's, that's, where, that's where my career started, right, was with emotionally impaired kids. So I know exactly, emotionally impaired in residential uh, systems. So yeah. I know exactly kind of where you're coming from there. But that is, those are two pretty unique groups um, right. that, that if, if there isn't this um, equalizer, Right or this this thing that kind of sits between them, it, right. that could be that's that's you're asking for some trouble. Oh yeah. But, so so in your view that 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 tool becomes that equalizer between them. Oh, it was absolutely the equalizer, and the thing is, uh, what it became it was was that common tool they could both use, uh, and um, and uh, they actually, you know, worked with them side by side. They have a science. They that place has a science fair with kids and. And the teacher from the third grade uh, group from the um, the EH program actually, you know, said to this woman with the uh, the teacher was from the autistic program, she's let's get our kids on a project together. So these teachers took some major risks. They even took the kids off site and everything. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah. So the thing was, and, and then you know each one of them uh, were able to um, have a some sort of poster around what they did and it was really about um about cleaning the environment and stuff like that so but i, I like to sort of get to all other projects that i was involved in too. yes please yeah please so um I, I was i was lucky enough to get a three-year grant call uh from a math and science partnership grant um and i named the project science for all and basically applied the udl principles um to science um and basically said that how do we, how can we uh, engage all learners uh, at any age in science? Right. Uh, and so the thing is, uh, I was lucky enough to be working with two wonderful um, professionals. One, a reading specialist, Joan Sedita, who's from Massachusetts, and um, because we wanted to help with reading comprehension skills. And then we also wanted to be able to really delve into inquiry. For, for children at all ages. And so we, I basically contracted with Joyce Tugel 
And um, that was a, an unbelievable project um, that was highly successful. People, the, the question came up um, in, in one summer when we were doing some training. So um, uh, how do I include all learners? Okay, and, um, and the, actually the class, we had teams of special ed teachers and classroom teachers together, okay, from all sorts of grade levels from all the way from elementary, middle school, and high school. And, and the question was, uh, came up in a training um, one summer, well, um, how do I, how do I, how do I uh, teach all these children, including children with, with all these challenges? And so um, I sort of turned around and I said to them, and this is a quote that I'm, that's often people relate, you know, relate to me, and I say, well, if you remove the veil of disability, you'll see the learner. Oh, wow, that's a great quote. Okay. You heard it here, folks. You've heard it here. So, so let me just tell you, that made all the difference in the world to those yeah. people classroom teachers. They now really thought seriously that I don't really need to see this kid and just the challenge. I need to see all aspects of this child uh, uh, so that I can actually design my lessons to be more effective. Um, and so the thing is, is they needed to see every aspect of that child using that UDL lens. And, um, and that's what I, that's when I first started using that. That was in, I think around 2009 or 2010, I think. Yeah. Um, it took place around then. Um, I think it was 2009. And um, so uh, from there, you know, when I um, finally got involved in personalized learning, UDL just seemed a natural fit. And um, then, you know, the rest is history. Uh, at this point, um, so people, um, I, I think that people just really need to be able to look at children differently, um, and um, and we need to get teachers to see the learner <laughs> in yeah. every child. Yeah. And, um, so I'm always expounding, and one chapter in, in the book is called "Discover the Learner in Every Child." Um, I never use the word student, um, except for that this time tonight, yeah. but yeah. Uh, we, if we are, are really going to transform education, we need, to tra we need to change our language about who the children in our classroom are. Well, and I love, I love your stance uh, and view of the learner because I think that that terminology of learner and student, um, student is an adapted term, right? It's, it's a specialized term. And in its specialization, what it does is it starts to limit what kind of what our definition is. But the term learner is this very adaptive term. It gives us, it still contains the identity of, of being a true, you know, thinking and learning and, and interacting with your world, but it opens up so many other avenues because the learner is not just the kid sitting in your class, the learner is you as right. an educator or as an administrator who walks in. Uh, and, and then that really begins to encompass that entire kind of idea and sense of, of variability, right? right. It reframes right. it. I'm, I'm just, I've been just so uh, enamored lately with the folks that are looking at it and saying variability is not just this place from special education, but it is right. a place of all learners. And mm. if we open up the framework, like you're saying, of, of defining what a learner is, we've really found an adaptive way of talking about people people who are thinking and, and using executive functioning and all these different pieces and all these different human beings. Um, and so I love that. And, and, and people on Twitter are loving it. Um, and they're asking, they're asking more about the project you just talked about. And they're ask, <laughs> asking. Um, so Kathy Howery has a couple questions. And we'll get to those in, in just a few minutes. Um, I have some uh, from uh, Denise DeCoste as well and, and some from Steve. So uh, I want you to kind of just, if you could just kind of, um, I know that's very hard. But in the next few moments, if you could kind of um, kind of surmise where your UDL journey is, is um, still going right where it's finished kind of talking about that and then um okay. i'd love to ask you some of these questions because they're they're good they're good questions well, i i really want to tell you you know where i <laughs> so i began this journey what motivates me every day mm. um anyone that's read my book actually knows <laughs> what kind of motivates me every day yeah. yeah but um so um i have uh two sons they're 35 and 38 today uh but each one of them had their own individual challenges uh and um, so uh, my oldest son was a severe dyslexic and still is. Uh, he, he reads, uh, he went to uh, Kildonan finally where he finally learned how to read at 16 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, 
But the thing is, is that um, he never developed the independent learning skills that children need to have if they really are going to college, have a college or career and go into the post-secondary. Right, so right. The thing is, um, I've been driven by his personal experience and uh, I started a company back in 2001 called Ed Tech Associates. And uh, I left K to 12 because I knew I was going, I needed to do something else. Um, and um, then, and, and I was going to tell you the true story. 9-11 mm -hmm. uh, happened um, and I was sitting there watching that. And I, you know, and I want to say to you is that that was probably the most profound effect I've ever had in my entire life. That's like the, that was like the, the point where I, made the decision uh, about the path that I was going to follow for the rest of my life. Yeah. So, yeah. So the thing is, I, uh, a lot of people ask me, well, how do you become an entrepreneur anyway in education? And I said, well, you know, I'll just tell you how I did it and maybe something that you may want to think about. But um, I asked myself two questions. I cried a lot during that time. Um, and uh, I said, and my father used to say to me years ago um, that, even in, the worst tragedy, even in the worst tragedy that um, people would actually, you know, they, you could find some wonderful thing uh, out of the worst tragedies. So, um, and so I asked myself two questions. Uh, why are you here on this earth? And how do you plan to make a difference? And so with that, I basically, uh, you know, follow this path uh, that I wanted to be able to help teachers understand how to use tools to support the diversity of learners in their classroom. And that's how I began. Um, and then, you know, I ended that company just about a year and a half ago. Um, and I, I don't see Brian anymore, but hopefully he's around. Oh yeah, 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 I'm still here, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but <laughs> the thing is, uh, that's how I started. And um, that sort of provide me a focus. So once you answer those two questions, then you are, then you find your purpose in your life. Mm -hmm. and, and that purpose really drives what you do going forward. Um, and this is what I will do the rest of my life is try to get educators to understand how learners learn and how to see the learner in every child and find a way how we can develop the skills so that every learner has choices in their life. Um, and, uh, and what it really is in the end, and what I talk about now is how you develop learner agency with children. Oh, yes. And, and how you get there, and how you can use UDL to, 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 to get there. And so that's really what I will probably profess for a very long time, um, mm -hmm. and because uh, I want them to know how important it is. And recently I talked about that we need to promise every child agency. Yeah. Oh, that's a powerful statement right there, Kathleen. That is such a powerful statement. We need to promise. We need to promise every child ag agency. That's. Ooh. Yeah, I, I love that. And I think so that's starting to kind of um, go into that second part. Like, what is your UDL passion? And I love that. Um, and I want to come back and I want to revisit it. But I, but I also want to reach out to our people um, on Twitter and our people in the chat and, and throw some questions at you because it isn't ask me anything. So there, there are a couple out there, um, but uh, uh, let me pull this first one in um, from Kathy Howry. Uh, she's one of, she's watching us through Zoom and is in the chat. Um, and her question is, um, it kind of goes all the way back and it says, um, so what do you think about UDL and the inclusive in, and inclusive education? And that's, you know, that's a pretty broad uh, question. And I think that you've answered some of it, but I'm trying to, I'm also trying to nail it down, um, what your stance is. Well, UDL, UDL, using the UDL lens um, that, you know, that we've defined, um, that really needs to be used in inclusive uh, education. And mm. um, because the thing is, is that we need to uh, not only discover the learner in every child, but every learner needs to discover who they are as a learner. Yeah. And we need to empower learners with that knowledge about who they are and how they learn. And we don't need to keep that a secret. Okay. <laughs> it's yeah. not, no need for that. Well, and it's not benefiting anybody. 
right <laughs> right it's not a secret that we, we even own right so the thing is is how can we do that because in order for children for child to develop agency you really have to empower them with that knowledge about who they are as a learner and to be able to be proactive in their learning instead of telling kids what they need we need to get kids to ask for things they need to learn too so um and that's what we need to do at a very early age yeah. okay um, and as soon as we do that that we can really help them develop agency so if you start off at the beginning say in elementary school or in, in kindergarten and getting kids to talk about who they are as learners in in terms that they they would more likely use then i think that kids that become proactive as uh, elementary children will will have no problem developing agency in the end yeah uh, yeah, and, and I, I, boy, I'm raring to go on the agency, but I want to ask some other questions. Um, so so uh, our own Steve Nordmark, um, who you know, um, and who uh, is affectionately known as Nordy here at, at UDLIRN, has a great question. He's, his question is, um, so when you go in and you talk to districts or you talk to individuals um, uh, and you do this kind of this idea of, of UDL learning and um, how to implement it and how to bring it in, um, to districts, how do you how do you p position UDL um, uh, and personalized learning? Like, how do they start to? How do you open up that conversation with a district or open up that conversation with a group? Uh, re really good question. And the thing is, uh, Steve probably has the answer to this. Yeah, I felt like it was a little loaded, uh, but, but it was a really good. One. Well, that's okay. So, <laughs> so what what will you, you do is that um, some of the things that you want to do is that you really want to bring all stakeholders together in a conversation first about really they need to really help define their vision mm -hmm. of their school and their community um the the next thing that they need to do and, I, and I, i'm going to try to simplify this as much as possible sure, but sure. really need to set develop a set of beliefs about learners what they want for their learners in their community and mm -hmm. everyone needs to agree yeah UDL is not brought up right away because that's really how you get there. <laughs> okay. 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 We need to all believe and commit around the beliefs around learners and teachers in the community. Really, what do they want? Mm -hmm. uh, and one school here in New Hampshire, uh, actually, um, you know, they don't use necessarily UDL, but they spent two years really defining those things. Yeah. as a whole community that means parents business people kids uh teachers administrators they all came together and they really helped define that and then they all committed to it because once they committed to it because let's face it you're going to get funding year after year after year in your school district to make all of this happen you yeah. know and so you need to all buy in um and once you do that um you know that's really the foundation uh in the very beginning before you actually get into how you're going to do this um and so using udl uh, a lot of people um, have taken the course that we've given over the last five years or so called you know um the five w's of personalized learning mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those, in those school districts in which um they felt it was extremely important and, uh, and in our second book we really emphasize this is the importance of developing a common language in your school so that both teachers, learners, administrators, the janitor, everyone knows the common language because you can't change the culture in a school until you change the language in the yeah. school. And everyone needs to be able to talk to each other. And, um, and parents need to understand it. So um, that's important, the building the common language around personalized learning, universal design for learning. So I want to tell you that. So we've done this in some school districts and the kids uh, and talk from the perspective of Access Engage and Express mm -hmm. uh, sort of the teachers when they have those conversations. And maybe a learner saying, you know what, I really need to, um, I really like to learn how to do this because I'm having trouble accessing X, right? Uh, so the kids are asked as, talking about that. Or maybe they even could be even talking about a specific lesson or even a project about the maybe 
and they're, and they're are looking through this lens, and so is the teacher all the time. And they're using lens as a teacher. You're using this lens to design your lessons on a daily basis. You see, and when everybody is using that lens and talking that same language, it's a very powerful. It's a transformative moment in, in schools because the culture begins to change. You know? Well, and and so I love the fact that you highlight this idea of culture um, and how it's so deeply rooted in universal design for learning, and that, I, and and I really like the way that you phrase that UDL is this, is this framework system that that gets us there, that starts to move us there. It's it's part of the how, but really we need to be it, large organizations, district organizations need to be grounded in their beliefs and in the mm -hmm. outcomes that they want to see, and those are the things that shape how we look at the lens of UDL. And that really does put UDL into this concept of, of a lens, um, right. which we see things and everybody's talking the same language and everybody's right. accountable to each other. Right. That's, uh, that's, that's this, beautiful, um, this beautiful piece of, of, um, of a collective, right? Like this is an educational collective. This is everybody's holding each other accountable and everybody's thinking yeah. with each and, other. And the thing is, one of the important things is that, you know, the, that language is extremely important between the teacher and the learner. Mm -hmm. because that's where those relationships are built. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's where kids are. And, you know, I, I can talk to you about that three-step process, but that very person thing about that learner profile, using the UDL lens around the learner profile, and, and then both teacher and learner are looking through that same lens. And then they can have conversations because um, personalized learning is built on relationships. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the one way you build that relationship is to really understand how each other learn. So. Yeah. Well, and I think, so, so um, there are lots of people that are just loving, um, loving that last phrase and then that phrase of, it's important to help others uh, identify their beliefs about learners and develop a common language uh, and, and the concept of uh, culture and how that's so very important as, as we um, move into the lens. Um, and Kathy Howery states, um, and appropriately so, that uh, beliefs are the why and that language is important. And I absolutely, I, I absolutely not only get that feeling from you, but I think that you articulate what, what we are in this, this next phase of universal design for learning and moving it from a special ed context or, or from a special ed, um, like special ed centric kind of view into this, into more of this is what education should look like, just right. in general. Yeah. Uh, so and I think that framing is so important. Yeah. So the thing is, it's, it's, it's that um, the, when we empower teachers and learners with understanding this lens, I mean, um, this is how education is going to be transformed. Mm -hmm. UDL is essential to the transformation of education, mm -hmm. okay? Whether anyone knows it. Our job is to get people to believe that by showing models and showing examples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, is that we need to take, you know, UDL, you know, um, and, and, and we need to put UDL in a brighter light and talk about it in ways for all learners all yeah. of the time. We can't, we, we have to do that because you can't scale this unless everyone is talking about it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, and uh, that's, that's the biggest challenge uh, that we have. And, you know, I'm going to do my part because I keep writing about this stuff and, uh, <laughs> right. and talking about this stuff. But, For sure. uh, but the thing is, if we don't focus on the learner, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, we will never get there, okay? We need to really understand how children learn and respect them and value them as learners. It's the whole value system that you have. Those beliefs and values in your school are critical to creating the change so that every learner can thrive in the school. Yeah, and, and it's, you know, so um, uh, I'm just like, I'm getting goosebumps, quite honestly, Kathleen. I, I, I'm just, um, I could spend all night talking about this conversation. Um, but it is, it is that, that system of saying that, um, again, f rephrasing from students to learners, which gives us all permission to be learners. Um, uh, and then uh, really talking about the things that make us who we are as a district, our identity, our belief system, the outcomes we want grounding us in that. And, and while there might be this idea of, 
paper implementation or legislation that's helping us get there, that what I'm hearing say, and, and if I'm wrong, please correct me. What I'm hearing you say is that stuff's good and that helps support us, but really that's not the transfer, that's not the transformation agent. Transformation agent are these conversations we're having in our districts about who are learners and what are they doing and how do we respect them? And that to me is all about the agency. Is there more to it than, than that for agency? Well, well, no. So the thing is, is that, you know, that three-step process that we often talk about um, in our book is, is that, you know, the learners need to understand who, how they learn. That's mm -hmm. critically important. And, and the teacher needs to understand how these children learn. And a lot of times people will say, oh, how can I do that if I have 100 kids? Well, let me tell you, it actually can be done. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is that kids want to share that out. Even high school kids want to share that out, okay? And you can yeah. do that in all sorts of ways, by the way, uh, with all different types of tools, all right, for them to use. The next thing is, is um, so we need to take a look at their strengths and challenges around access, engage, and express. And we need to be able to say, okay, so um, let's talk about, or let's think about, uh, and we want kids to make some suggestions here too, about the types of tools uh, that they uh, would like to learn how to use to support a challenge or enhance a strength, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and it's because it's not just about the challenges, it's also about the strengths. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we need to talk about skills, okay? Because if we don't provide the skills around the tools, you don't need, there's no reason to have the tools. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, sure. because, the, because, the goal, because the goal is, the goal is, okay, so the process is the learner profile, the personal learning backpack, and the personal learning plan, where kids are setting goals with teachers. They're talking about how I'm going to make that happen, how I'm going to get there, okay? We need to teach kids how to monitor their own progress. That's a skill that's not in, that's innate. Uh, some kids do that or able to do that pretty well. Some kids cannot do that. We need to help them understand how they sort of measure their progress and how they check on their progress. So, and the importance, and of, the importance of, it. of it. And the importance of that. Um, we need to get kids to talk about their learning. Um, that's every kid. They, um, and it's not, I know a lot of people think it's metacognition, but it's not metacognition, it's called meta learning. Okay. Mm -hmm. Talking about your learning. Uh, uh, metacognition is about your thinking. So, um, all of that, uh, all that thing, all that, the basis to the meta learning really comes from the work of Chris Watkins uh, from um, the University of London, who is a 25 year researcher on learning. Mm -hmm. And he talks about that really deeply. And he was, he's really been our, probably our, one of our major influencers. So I took what we learned from him about learning and tied it in with, it with UDL. And uh, that's what we came up with. And um, we saw, personalized learning as uh, and he talked about personalized learning well over maybe a 10 or 15 years ago in one of environments that's what he was researching and um, in England and um, but the thing is is that we basically uh, I always I've always seen UDL and saw it as the the absolute uh, it was obvious to me how it could be used around personalized learning <laughs> pretty yeah. early on so we introduced all of that well, about four years ago. Okay, that right. whole about using UDL's lens. So, but the thing is, is that um, I've been doing this a long time, and mm -hmm. and I think, you know, as Malcolm Gladwell says, you have to put ten thousand hours in or something to become this expert. But um, I think that. Um, you know, the, the brain works very slowly and sometimes and um, those whole ideas, those big ideas like access, engage and express, you know, um, really was a total epiphany. I mean, that was after 10 years of working diligently around UDL and that, that thoughts came to mind because I wanted teachers to use it in daily practice. The challenge is, is that, um, that UDL is an incredible, great idea um, based mm -hmm. on research. Sure. And we want it to be used in daily practice. And my challenge was, how do I take something like UDL and, uh, and to simplify it into words so it can be in the daily psychology of teachers and learners right. all the time? Well, and that's when you came up with access, right? Engage, yeah. Yep, access, engage, and express, right. 
Um, and I love that. I love that as a phrasing because it does kind of highlight all of those pieces. Um, and, it, and it does get to that, um, Kathy Howery asked it, and, it, and it is a question that's always kind of in my mind too. Um, if, if, we are, if there, there's the phrasing that it's not that students are disabled, it's that curriculum's disabled, and that UDL looks at it that way. But I've always, I've, I haven't, it's not that I take exception with it, it's that I want to say, I want to say, but how? But how does it do that? And I think that that phrasing of access, engage, express, really, it, it changes my, my viewing, my lens of it myself, right? Mm -hmm. um, um, and I start to say, oh, that's, that's how we do it. That's how we look at, and we can say, this is where curriculum's disabled, or this is where students are right. very variables, um, or their variability in their learning, and we can design that then. Um, right. Is that kind of where that, where that yeah. came from, or yeah. am I? Yeah, so the thing is, is that, that if we want teachers to use this, every teacher to use this in daily practice, if we want, um, then we have to make it so that it can it can be um, they we introduce the terminology and the process okay in the way in the beginning you're looking at you know geez I'm doing this lesson this way right well if you hold that lens against that lesson okay um, and think about who your kids are in the classroom the materials and methods that you're using you say oh well now and now now this is why this you know this these kids are not getting it you know, the thing is, it answers a lot of questions for teachers too. Yeah. Um, using that particular lens in a process, what I call like the UDL lesson review process, I created that like, um, oh God, probably a decade ago mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in my thinking about, you know, and when I was training uh, teachers and, and I said, you know, so, and a lot of this stuff, of course, came from a lot of the work of CAST. And, um, but I, I, I had to put it into um, a practice with, because people that were coming to my graduate courses were uh, classroom teachers, okay? They weren't special ed teachers. Uh, they wanted to become better teachers. They wanted to understand their learners better. They wanted to be able to design their lessons so that they were more accessible. They needed to understand how they would do that based on who their kids are, okay? So, um, so that was something I started back when I started my graduate courses, and it's probably more like 15 years ago now because it was in 2002 that i started those um mm -hmm. those, those graduate courses and and i wanted them to be thinking about those i always wanted them to be thinking about the learners in their classroom um and so that's how it all began and but um in order for it to be scaled uh at all you have to use language that's going to be easier to use by uh, both teachers and learners on a daily basis so yeah that's how that, I, I, and, and I love that. I love that it sums it up. And, and I think that there is, when I talk to districts or, or I'm working with teachers, um, especially around uh, how do we put boots to the ground or, or, or rubber to the pavement, and we talk about what is UDL going to really start to look like? How is it going to take shape? Um, sometimes terminology gets in the way, doesn't it? Um, and I, I think that, it, not that it's bad, but that if you're not ready in that framework or you're not ready in that mindset, you haven't spent enough time developing your skill set to develop your mindset. You need something easier to kind of grab a hold of. And I mean, I it, it some way, it, you know, so the, the whole concept of personalized learning is that that right now most teachers are in a, you know, a traditional classroom. Uh, mm -hmm. And how do we get to this more where kids have more voice and choice, what we call stage one of personalized learning. And it's all about giving voice and choice. And um, but in order to do that, you, you know, you definitely need to understand who your learners are. And um, I mean, people can take a look at the stages and everything, but how do you get to a learner-centered environment? You're still using, you're still using this lens, no matter what stage you're in, you see. Yeah, uh, the, yeah. Using it and you're using it. So uh, at some point, kids are going to um, take more charge of their learning, take more ownership to their learning when they are, have developed the skills to do all of that, but they can always be contributing, okay? And um, again, it's really valuing and respecting learners um, in each one of them. And one of, the, one of the really important points I wanna make about that learner profile when the kids use it, um, it validates the learner. It validates who they are. Kids need to feel good about who, and how, who they are and how they learn. And uh, we need to really create that that climate and that culture 
in the classroom where every child's respected in the way they learn. So yeah, and well, and and it goes back to that uh, that point you had made earlier about. Um, it's not just about challenges, right? It's about right. recognizing strength too, because agency doesn't come from just looking right. at fixing the barriers. Agency right. comes from understanding your resilience too, right? Um, exactly. And what you're good at. And I, I love that it, that you that that phrasing sticks with me and and really resonates with me around. It's not just about challenges, because one of the one of the hallmarks of talking about UDL is really talking about barriers, right? And how do we bust those barriers? But even right. then, that we're still not always focused or that that language doesn't become strength focused. Right, right. It still, right. Feels, right. It, it still feels somewhat deficit focused to me. Um, and well, and is, I think that's good that you that you're rephrasing that. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So so you know one of the things that an example of why why would people want to use this, you know, is uh, I you know one of the things I do is that I or oh, time and time again I actually use my own children as as the model right and so i take my oldest son who probably uh suffered the most as a learner mm -hmm. uh that here is who he was before he went to first grade <laughs> right? right um real curious child storyteller articulate smart i mean very personable could talk to anyone and then he went to first grade and no you know once he got into first grade and he couldn't learn how to read because he was in the whole language <laughs> curriculum. And yeah. come to find out five or six years later because, uh, that he was dyslexic, okay? So the thing was, is he suffered the most, okay, of all of, of kids. And but if someone had actually taken this lens and looked at him through this lens of Access Engage and Express, they would have seen all of these strengths. So here's the problem with labeling children. Right. Okay. That teachers basically, uh, and I came to this realization, by the way, just a couple of years ago when I was doing a writing about my passion, mm -hmm. about personalized learning, I realized that teachers saw my child as disabled in every aspect of his learning. They never, ever saw his strengths. Right. Ever, ever. Yeah. Not, oh, oh. not one teacher. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the thing was, because it's so easy to slap a label and develop perceptions <laughs> and, and that never changes. But when you ask teachers to look at children through this lens, they're going to see strengths. Okay. Yeah. There's yeah. challenges, but so is that child because that child, by the way, who doesn't learn or doesn't learn well or struggles, they stop seeing themselves as learners. And we, that's the real tragedy to all of this, okay? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. We need to get kids to see themselves as learners again. Yeah. And that's, that's what our job is, okay? That's our job, all right? We need to help kids see themselves as learners. And uh, the thing is, if in fact they had used that lens, they would have saw a totally different child uh, than, and they would have never, because uh, you know the story goes is that he was, off the chart in mathematics at seven years old. Mm -hmm. uh, but he felt stupid every day of his life in school and especially in mathematics because he couldn't write the process down. Mm -hmm. So, so right. he never realized uh, his, his, his real gifts were never nurtured ever. Yeah. You see? Yeah, yeah, I absolutely do. I, and, that, and that really frames the conversation. I want to, so I, I can't believe how quickly the time is flying, quite honestly. Um, so I want to get back to some, uh, some questions um, and uh, uh, some comments that are made. Um, so the first one uh, comes from uh, Sue Harden, our own Sue Harden um, at S Harden 22. And she says, um, I'm sorry, I have to find it in my tweet here. Uh, she says, so how do you use authentic learning opportunities and interests to help kind of personalize that learning? Um, and I think that that's a bigger question. Oh, yeah. So, you know, that affective side of learning, uh, mm -hmm. what engages me, what am I passionate about? Yeah. So um, in our publication, we actually do go through that whole questioning about uh, what am I interested in? How could I, how could I change the world? What, what, what am I personally interested in? Or what type of talents do I see myself having? How would I describe myself in so many different adjectives, right? Uh, but finding out and um, what really sort of engages children, uh, that's a really important key. That's that whole 
uh, looking through that lens around engage, okay, but mm -hmm. also kids articulating that. So the, the learner profile is a, is a two-step process, uh, and one of it is really looking at learners uh, and having learners look at themselves and sharing out those things about their passion about and what they want to do. And, um, and kids will actually tell you, uh, I mean, any kid will tell you what they love to do or what they think they're really yeah. good at, what they're interested in. And that's going to change over time, but that definitely is the hook with lots of kids. And you can certainly provide authentic experiences with kids. And those here in New Hampshire, what we do in New Hampshire at the high school level is that we give kids experiences and things that they want to learn how to do or want to experience something or some sort of career. So we call them what's called extended learning opportunities, and those are some authentic experiences that they have. And of course, earlier on, you can actually do some really authentic learning and some project-based learning, even place-based learning. Um, mm. That's very important. And, and the kids are so empowered when, they, when, when they're using and doing something that they're really interested in or have a real talent at. Um, and by the way, when you do that profile, you're looking at those strengths and challenges and kids are expressing those things, what they're really good at. Kids say, you know, I'm really good at this and I'm really good at that and I really love to be this. And about three or four years ago, uh, not three years ago, when I was, we were writing the first book, my, my son had a conversation with me on the phone one night, and she, he said, oh, you know what they should do with kids in high school, Mom? He said, they should find out what they really like to do and give them a chance to do it. Yeah, so, yeah. Wow. Yeah, novel so, idea, right? <laughs> a novel idea, right? <laughs> yeah, so, but here in New Hampshire, we actually do that, and that's a, a program, um, uh, authentic, what's called extended learning opportunities here in right. New Hampshire that uh, we have coordinators in every, every uh, high school in the state, so. So, I, um, so I'm gonna kind of transition us because we are coming up on the end of our time, unfortunately. Um, but, and and uh, I gotta pay some bills to keep the lights on, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, and I also want to, I also want to um, kind of push some of your work too. But uh, another question uh, that comes, that is coming up um, is uh, some people have found out that you're doing a pre-con uh, at the UDL IRN Summit this year in, in Orlando. And so the question is, um, what is the focus of that, of that pre-con on the summit? Well, the, the focus of that pre-con is that uh, the teachers that are, and the educators that come to that particular uh, pre-conference is uh, they're actually going to create their own learner profile. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, and they're going to build their own personal learning backpack. Oh, that's uh, fantastic. Uh, let, let, me, let me just say to you is that, is that um, they have to experience that first. Yeah, uh, sure. And before we can ask them to do that with kids. Uh, and the other thing is, is that um, this is often used, by the way, when teachers want to identify things that they want to learn. Mm -hmm. okay? Um, and um, it re really reveals things that they think that they need to learn or want to learn um, in their teaching. Yeah. And, and that can actually lead to what's called a personalized professional learning plan uh, for most teachers. So. But, but we're going we're gonna to do the three-step process. We're really going to focus on the profile and the, and the backpack with the teachers and saying, you know, I really like to learn this skill. I'd like to learn how to use this tool to do X. I, I feel really challenged in this area, or I want to take this particular strength, and I want to <laughs> use do this with that particular strength. Um, yeah. So we're gonna have a lot of good conversations. It's really gonna be fun. And, um, yeah, I might have to cancel my precons um, just so that I can kind of come myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna switch over uh, and share my screen real quick because I want to I want to share your work as well um, because your work is extensive and and I think that um, our viewers those of you that are those uh, of our viewers who aren't familiar uh, necessarily with all of your work um, I want to give them a way to get there um, okay. so I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen real quick and just kind of show some of the um, kind of go through and and uh, feel free to jump in. <clears throat> So, um, actually, let me go to present so that we can see this larger. And these will be in our show notes as well. Um, but uh, here's some of uh, Kathleen's articles: uh, "Personalization in UDL: A Perfect Match." Uh, that's the um, uh, that's from ASCD uh, Educational Leadership, uh, March 2017. So that's hot off the presses. Um, and then UDL Lens: Empower Teachers and Learners to Transform Education. Um, 
2000, September 2016. So, uh, and then uh, story behind my passion to personalize learning. And this is the one that you were talking about. This comes from Brooks. Um, and this is the one that you had kind of referenced earlier. Um, May 2016, Discover the Learner, Labels versus UDL Lens. Again, Brooks Publishing, May 2016. Uh, so just writing, writing like crazy in May, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, okay. yeah. So, so I had uh, I had cross posted the story uh, from a mm -hmm. post that I had done on personalized learning and uh, personalizedlearning.com is really the our blog site and our website. So uh, you can go there and take a look at that. Yes. Yeah. So I have that down as well. And then the final uh, article that I wanted to highlight. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me go back to present so that we can see them. And again, all of these will be kind of listed um, uh, in our show notes. So. Um, people be able to get to them, but changing perceptions, every child, a learner, uh, personalized learning, um, and that's your site, uh, November, 2014. Mm -hmm. right. But she wasn't done writing then folks. Uh, she's also got two fantastic books out. If you haven't picked them up or you don't have them on your Kindle, you need to get them. But if you don't have them yet, uh, Kathleen has given us a special promo code. Uh, and you'll see it down here. We'll also put that in the show notes uh, so that you can save 20%. But you're going to want these two, making learning personal, uh, the what, who, wow, uh, where, and why, um, and then how to personalize learning, um, the getting started. Um, and so those, and with a foreword uh, by uh, Louis Perez, who if you don't yeah. know him, you, you got to check him out as well. Well, uh, he's, well, he's co-presenting at the pre Oh, you beat me to it. I was getting right there. Because <laughs> he will be at the pre-con too. Uh, and if you want more information on, on these, uh, go to Corwin, www.corwin.com for more info. Uh, but that's not it, because uh, Kathleen never stops, right? So uh, on Monday, March 13th, 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, 6 p.m. Central, join her over at P Learn Chat uh, with her guest host from KnowledgeWorks as they talk about how can UDL support personalized competency-based education practices. I know I'm going to be there. That is, um, that is a huge, huge piece for me, something that I'm really, really excited about and really want to learn more about. Um, how are we doing that for teachers? How are we doing yeah. that? For so so if, if people go to P Learn Chat, um, at P Learn Chat, uh, where you know, we put out the six questions around that p-learn chat mm -hmm. so we just finished those today i just finished those today with knowledge work so we're publishing those uh over the next three to four days because people prepare for our p-learn chat oh, yeah for sure <laughs> if you're on a twitter chat whether it be udl chat p-learn chat some of the bigger chats out there um yeah there's there's some deep thought going on and you got to be prepared because how long is your chat is your chat one about? Hour. yeah one hour. an hour oh, goes fast. so quick it goes so quick um, so I'm a, I want to um, also highlight some of the things that we got happening uh, at the IRN. Um, if you have not, if you have not as of yet um, registered for the 2017 summit, it is in Orlando. It is the place where UDL leaders come to learn. You will have a, a, an amazing time. We really try to create an experience out of it from social gaming to networking to great pre-conferences. In fact, let me just show you the graphic. You go to udlirn.org. Uh, click, on the, click on the banner, you can register folks. Um, but we got two design labs uh, where folks just kind of come in and have open design and you and Kathleen McClaskey might stop by and, and David Rose might stop by and, and Katie Novak and great people in the room just kind of thinking 12 interactive networking sessions, uh, six pre-conference sessions, seven UDL talks, 27 breakout sessions. Uh, we are looking at just huge numbers this year for, for our summit people. It's a great place to network because that's a big part of what we do is bring implementation research and networking them together. And then we have one uh, David Rose. So you gotta come for his fireside chat. If you can just fly in for that, I would. <laughs> that. Um, and don't forget, you, you can have a chance to create the next UDL Crusader. Um, that contest is still going on over at our website. You'll see this little picture. Um, uh, of the Crusader from last year, you click on him and you can uh, read all the rules and contests. If, you're, if your design is chosen for the next Crusader 20, 2018's registration, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, so it's a pretty big prize. We're pretty excited about it. We wanna see your creative artwork um, and helping us design the next Crusader. Uh, UDL chat happens every first and third Wednesday of the month. Make sure that you're at it, folks. It is a rapid fire session. It is only a half hour long. So we make sure that we send our questions out so that you got plenty of time to kind of prepare for them.
Um, so that's, that's how I pay the bills. Um, and that's, um, <laughs> that's, that's me keeping the lights on here. Um, so make sure that you, again, please make sure that you register at the summit.udlirn.org. Uh, Kathleen, it has been an absolute pleasure. I wonder if you have any final thoughts for us. No, well, you know, uh, again, I think that everyone needs to th think about UDL for every child um, and uh, let that be our mantra going forward, okay? Um, because it's really a powerful practice uh, that we need to um, support and make everyone aware of it, okay? If it fell into ESSA, um, UDL, you know, is defined in ESSA now, uh, so now it's all up to us and those, all of the evangelists, <laughs> uh, anyone else. Uh, we don't need to keep this to ourselves so anymore, okay? We just really need to make sure that people understand it's for every child. Uh, and every learner, including them. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so. I love that phrasing. This is, Kathleen, this has been a great chat. I really, really appreciate you doing it. Um, so the incomparable folks, the incomparable maverick <laughs> thinker, Kathleen McClaskey. Make sure you, you see her. If you're not following on Twitter, you better get there. You better find her. You find her at Personalized Learning. Um, uh, I'm sorry, what's the website again? Personalizedlearning.com, yes? Right. It's, yeah, yes. it's what I would do. It's personalizedlearning.com, right? Yep. So make sure that you, that you, that you catch her there. Um, go out, buy her books. Uh, come see her at the summit. Um, and keep tuning in, folks, uh, because, because this Ask Me Anything is one of my favorite segments for us to do. So thank you so much, Kathleen. Well, uh, thank we'll you, Brian. You in, for... We'll see you in, uh, in Orlando. Yeah, in a few weeks. All right. In, so. in a few weeks. Oh, I got to plug uh, one more thing. See everybody there. Yeah, uh, we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing an open, uh, open seat man on the street, uh, uh, kind of like ask me anything at the summit. So if you're coming to the summit, come find me. Let's sit down. Let's have a conversation and see what people are asking us. Thank yeah, you, well, again, Kathleen. Th this was a great experience. I'd recommend it to anyone. <laughs> All right. See, there you go. You can't get better than that, folks. You heard it here. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.